All right, this is one of my favorite pieces from Africa, although I can probably say that about a lot of them. So um, I just really like art history, who'd have thought? So this is a wall plaque from Oba's palace. Oba is the king, Oba's the king. And we're looking at the Edo people of, um, who are also called Benin. And so this is uh, Nigeria. This is uh, 16th century cast brass, and it's made using the lost wax technique that we saw first um, in, our, in our class. We saw it first coming from the Greeks. So um, remember the Greeks would uh, utilize the lost wax technique to make their bronze sculptures. So this is brass, and it's a little bit confusing because a lot of people call these incorrectly, and they call them the Benin bronzes when in reality they are brass. So just try to keep that in mind. Um, of course, if it was an identify question, you would need to put brass for this. So lost wax, again, um, remember that they would uh, make an object out of clay, make a mold, um, cover it in wax, melt that wax away, pour in uh, the, the liquid metal, and then they would be able to create work that takes that form. So this is a cast form. These were all made in pair. So um, you would definitely want to have duality for one of your themes here, as well as power and authority. And this is nicknamed the equestrian oba. So equestrian is, of course, referring to the fact that the oba, the king here, is on horseback. So he's actually sitting on the horse. And so this, um, this plaque, they're not very big. They're about like this, right? About around, you can think of like a sheet of paper. Um, but if you look right here, you can see, now the scale is not realistic, but that's not their goal. So um, you can see that the Oba here is sitting on uh, the back of uh, the horse. He's kind of sitting side saddle. Then you have uh, servants on either side of him. And so this is very much symmetrical, right? You have him in the middle, you have servants on either side. Um, and then you have other servants who are actually holding up fans or shields to protect him from the sun to keep him cool. Right. Um, and then there's this kind of tooled background here. You can see these little rosettes, which we'll talk about here. So all of this is going to be, uh, again, made by the metal taking the form of the mold that it's poured into. This is a relief as well, right? It has a flat, uh, a flat back. There were hundreds of these at uh, the palace. They were there to, um, just like, you know, um, King Louis uh, at Versailles would have a painting of himself. Many, many, many paintings and sculptures of himself. They are here to proclaim the status of the king, to reinforce his legitimate right to rule, his power and authority. And then sometimes they were made for, we believe, specific achievements. So these could be commemorative as well, but they're all about the king. Again, the Edo people, Benin, call their king Oba. Now, Oba had um, obviously power being in control, um, but Oba had some specific um, uh, rituals and um, regulations that only applied to the king. So, for example, only the Oba and the people directly around him of a certain status could wear coral beads. And coral beads were this um, significant example of, of power, right? The red coral beads. And so we'll look at that and we'll talk about that as well. Now, one of the really, really unfortunate things about this work is the British uh, very violently took over the palace, um, almost annihilate, annihilated uh, the people of the Benin Kingdom, and they tore down um, the palace. And when they did that, they did not document exactly where these were hanging. We just know that they were on the pillars and the walls inside the palace, and that they were hung, um, or that they were always made in two. And so we can kind of deduce that, you know, maybe they were across from each other, or maybe they hung, you know, side by side. Um, but unfortunately, um, these were not, um, you know, strategically documented as where exactly they were hanging. So one of the things that's most important about this work, um, and this is going to be form, but it's also going to bleed over into context, is that the um, 
uh, the people of the Benin Kingdom are trading with Portugal. And I have a very fancy map <laughs> that I'll show you in a second. But um, because they're trading with Portugal, they are able to have this mutually beneficial system set up. And so one of the things that they are importing, okay, from Portugal is the coral, which are the beads that only Oba can wear, right? The people directly around Oba and the brass that make up these armbands. And so one of the armbands is up there at the top in the picture. And so this is the, the metal that was actually melted down to use to make the plaques, okay? Um, and so this is a system that was set up uh, between the Portuguese and the Edo people, the people of Benin. Well, the British are jealous and they want in on this trade. And so that's where a lot of the, the issues are going to arise um, with them um, doing this forceful colonization and annihilation. Some people look at those kind of rosette flower, there's four, like a, a center and then four petals coming off as being potentially derived from uh, the Christian cross. Maybe, could be. Um, a lot of people think that this plaque looks similar to some of the codex uh, folio pages that we saw during uh, the medieval um, era. And that's absolutely quite possible that these um, codexes of maybe the Gospels um, or even secular stories could have made their way to West Africa. And so that is definitely possible that there's converging cultures, absolutely, um, as well as through the trade, but also through aesthetic influence. This is the context picture that College Board gives us. And so you guys need to know this picture. Um, they could show you this and ask, ask you to discuss it and link it back to the plaques. So this is their, um, this was when the photo was taken, which I believe was the 70s. This was their Oba. Um, again, you can see Oba is wearing those red coral beads kind of in a interlace pattern, um, his hat, his neck, right? He's wearing many, many strands of the Oba and then uh, kind of down onto his chest and shoulders. And then his fan bearers around him are also uh, wearing um, coral, which is kind of showing their significance, their importance here. So this is setting them apart, especially our king, right? The King Oba, he is setting, being set apart. All right, so context. Here's my very fancy map that I promised you guys. And I drew that arrow with my mouse. So you know it's very uh, special. All right, so here's Portugal, right? Right here off the edge of Spain, the Iberian Peninsula. Portugal has this really sweet trade route set up with Nigeria. And so everything is going well. Well, the British decide right up here in the UK, right? The British decide that they want in on this trade route. So they send um, a group of, I believe, what does it say here? Uh, 300 men um, to see if um, the Edo people would be welcome, would be interested in trading with them and letting them in on this trade deal. I don't know, maybe they're gonna give them tea or something to trade. And when they arrived at the shores here of what is now Nigeria, they were told, look, now it's not a good time. Our Oba has just gone into a, a, a series of rituals. Um, this, is, this is not convenient. And of course, without modern technology, they didn't call or anything to let them know they were coming. They just showed up and said, hey, trade with us. And they said, now it's not a good time. So they, the British did not listen and the British kept um, persisting and they actually invaded into Benin City. And so uh, the Edo people felt they had no choice and retaliated and killed 250 of the 300 uh, British who had shown up. Those 50 men who were not killed sailed back to the UK. And of course, uh, the British were like, oh my gosh, we have to retaliate, right? So it starts with this really ugly, um, uh, event, which is going to be called the British Punitive Expedition. So the British Punitive Expedition was where the British, in anger, because of this killing, they come back and they're going to destroy um, 
the the Edo people, the Benin Kingdom, uh, this part of Nigeria, and they're going to take for themselves all of these goods. This is a photograph from that 1897 retaliation. Uh, the British sent 700 men, um, armed men, of course, so they're going to have guns and the, the Edo people did not. So it was very much an unfair advantage. They burned down the palace. They captured many, many goods. And you can see in this picture, of course, this is a picture from 1897. Um, so it's a little bit hard to see, but you can see uh, some of the metal goods they took here, a lot of tusks, a lot of ivory tusks. And that's when all of these plaques were taken from Oba's palace. Now, not only is that criminal and stealing, but it also has been problematic for uh, museums today who own these pieces that were stolen by the British from the Benin Kingdom. So it kind of takes us back to Lord Elgin and the marbles from uh, the Acropolis, right? Should these things go back to where they were stolen from, right? Um, now, we've talked about the really horrible negative connotations that um, uh, Western culture has oftentimes imposed upon uh, people from the continent of Africa. One of the things that happens here with the British punitive expedition is they believed that there was no way uh, these Ida people had created all of this work, like the plaques. And so they thought that surely, surely, um, somebody else had made the stuff for them. And so there's that denouncing of, um, of, of humans as, as being um, inept or as being, um, you know, uh, incapable, which is terrible and wrong. Uh, but that was something that I'm sure uh, the British were, were doing to just, right, build themselves up. So it's terrible, it's wrong, uh, but it's something that was definitely part of the mindset that empowered them to do uh, things like this. And if you've read about British uh, and French, colonization, you know that it's, there's a lot of horrible, horrible things here happening. So um, the Benin uh, brasses, right, which are often called bronzes, but brasses, you can see here the number of them that are in different museums around the world. Again, if we were to take everything from every museum that wasn't from that culture, your museums are only going to have local work. But at the same time, um, stolen work is definitely problematic. And so this is an ongoing conversation. I know that some of the uh, plaques, these Benin plaques have actually gone back, been given back. Here is a picture from the British Museum to give you an idea of scale. Um, relative size, um, almost all of them are rectangular. Again, made in pairs, they are relief, they are made of brass. They commemorate the king and different events, um, significant events of the king of Oba. And I thought that this was a great comparison um, that I found. And so Justinian and the Byzantine uh, compared with uh, the Benin uh, Oba plaque. And so we'll talk about this later on, but I want you guys to go and start thinking about some similarities in uh, form and content and context um, and function with these pieces. So all of FFCC.